So, in the middle of the pandemic, a friend of mine wanted to build a new PC and ended up buying my PC. And if you know me, you know I'm a little bit of a, a PC enthusiast. I've been building PCs for a long time. I said PC about seven times just now. So in the middle of the pandemic, I decided, why don't I build a Threadripper? The problem with that is Micro Center was like, just scavenged. Amazon couldn't get anything. Newegg was sold out of everything. I did end up building a Threadripper. However, I had used a bunch of parts that I didn't really like. Um, kind of just got like what was on the shelf when we went and kind of pieced it together. I've been using it for a couple weeks. Today, I'm finally gonna put all the parts in that I've been getting throughout the course of the last month. Uh, redo the wire management, clean it up, and document the whole build, walk you guys through what I chose, why I chose it, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, without further ado, let's rip this thing down. Normally, I would have all the boxes around me, I'd show you guys all the parts, but I already put this computer together uh, so besides the new parts, I don't have the boxes, so we're gonna go part by part. For the CPU, because I do a lot of video editing, 3D rendering, uh, multitasking development, it's still way overkill, but I went with the Threadripper 3970X, I believe. It's 32 cores, 64 threads, 128 gigs of DDR4 uh, memory running at 4,000 megahertz, which I don't really know what that means, but it's fast as shit. This is kind of wild, because I remember not too long ago, 128 gigs on a hard drive was a big deal, uh, and if you're way older than me, then you remember when there was like 128 kilobyte sticks of RAM and that was a big deal. Now you're getting 32 gigs per stick. And technically I'm only using four of eight slots on the motherboard, so I could go to 256 pretty easy. For the graphics card, we have a 2080 Ti. I've had this thing for like over a year. It's an absolute beast. I had this EVGA thing, which is the worst piece of shit in the world. It is so loud. I tried everything to get this thing to be quiet. It's not just the fans, the pump itself like whines. And I like to keep my desktop on my right side on my desk and literally all night. Like my friends are complaining through my mic, they can hear my cooler. Uh, so to remedy that, we're going with the NZXT Kraken. Uh, this is their newest model, it has a screen on it, and the logic was that my motherboard didn't have a screen on it, and I don't mind watching the temps uh, when I'm doing renders and stuff. So it was like, why not get this guy, because you can put your temps on it, and I can still keep an eye on it. You can also put a doge. I know you like doges. Hell yeah, dude. So that was my idea, however, I ended up buying another motherboard. There's nothing wrong with the one I had, but it was an RS Gigabyte. I'm not a fan of Gigabyte. I've always had Asus motherboards. They just didn't have them in stock. Um, so I picked up the ROG Strix TRX40 for storage. We have two NVMe drives, one gig uh, for my main drive, 256 gigs for my games, which let's be honest, that's just Call of Duty now because it takes the entire 256 drive. The case is the O11 Dynamic from Lee and Lee. This case is a little bit tricky. Uh, you have glass in the front and the side, so there's not really a place to mount fans backwards. Uh, so you either have to have every single fan in your case exhausting, which is not a good idea, uh, or you have to find an option for a fan that can reverse and still have RGBs, which Corsair came out with the QL, both sides have RGBs. So you don't have to worry uh, about if it's exhausting or intake, you can still see the RGBs. Uh, so we're gonna put nine of these guys in this computer. We have a thousand watt power supply, which I don't really care about the power supply, but whatever. I'm out of breath, it's a lot of parts. You wanna build it? Let's go, dude. Let's do it. This side, 100% done. Now my issue is, I haven't even seen the back yet. I'm actually scared to look at the back. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. There's also, I'm missing a power supply still, so, you know. Six hours later. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and say that I totally cable managed this, but I did a decent job, and you can see clearly the fan, so I was able to hide all the wires in this area. Not my best work, but the front of this thing, probably the cleanest build I've ever put together. So, quick disclaimer, normally, you should test all your stuff. I am a little cocky. I have never had a PC fail on me yet. I'm sure it's gonna happen soon, knock on wood. Also, majority of these parts besides the motherboard and the cooler, I had already been using for the last three weeks. I'm pretty confident at least that like the RAM works and the, uh, the CPU itself and the GPU and stuff like that. But if something doesn't work, it is a shitload of work to take it apart now. 
Uh, so ideally you would probably run it open out of the case and then maybe run it again in the case before you do all your wire management. Also, I know I'm gonna get comments about not wearing like a wrist static thing or gloves or yada yada or, or, or the drill. I mean, why would you use a drill that close? Just shut the fuck up. Let's plug this thing in and pray to God that it boots up. Also, I will say, the cool thing about the main gear power supply comes with this red power cable, which is definitely the first time I've seen this on something that's not a server. Moment of truth. Oh. Thank God. My camera's dying. I was up till 5 a.m. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. I'm not a PC review channel. I'm not gonna sit here and give you guys a bunch of scores and stuff. Honestly, I don't even know how to run that shit. So, we're just gonna go through like two real world examples. First off, editing this video, 10 minute uh, 4K video rendered out in three and a half minutes. That is unheard of in Premiere. My laptop, which is a 16 inch MacBook Pro i9, 64 gigs of RAM, wanted 15 minutes. And as a content creator, this opens so many doors because so many times I miss one clip in my video or I, I miss a title or, or whatever it might be. And it's just not worth it to try to go back and fix it. It's honestly easier to just say, fuck it. Hopefully no one catches that. Also scrubbing through the timeline, DJI Mavic Pro 2 H.265 files kill every computer I've ever tried to view them on. This thing handles it, no problem. Same story for After Effects and Cinema 4D. So as far as being a creator goes, this thing is insane. I did order an EOS R5 yesterday, which will shoot 8K RAW and 4K 120, and I'm sure that camera's gonna need something a little beefy uh, to edit the footage, and this is hopefully my answer to that. As far as gaming goes, Modern Warfare Warzone on a 1440p display at ultra high setting runs right around 100 frames per second. Every once in a while I saw it drop into the 90s. To be completely honest, an i9 or i7 build would have been way cheaper if you wanted a gaming machine. This is not a gaming machine. Uh, however, it will run pretty much any game you throw at it, no problem. As a developer, I normally hate Windows. However, with the newest Windows 10, and I can make a whole video about this, but they introduced WSL2, basically a virtual Linux machine underneath your, your Windows machine, and the two are tied together. So files are shared, ports are shared, everything like that. So basically, every time you open up a terminal, it opens up your Linux subsystem. You can sit there and do all the development you would ever do on a Linux box, test it on your Windows machine without having to worry about spinning up virtual machines and trying to go back and forth between your machine. And one of my biggest APIs that I have in production uh, that uses Babel to build on this thing, in between saves, 0.12 seconds to build the entire project. On my MacBook, five seconds. So as far as coding goes, Thumbs up there as well. Everything RGB wise controlled with one software. So Corsair IQ allows me to control all the fans, the RAM, and even the ASUS motherboard with one app, which is very nice. And then NZXT Cam is what allows me to change what's on that screen. Uh, CPU temps, GPU temps, workloads, uh, frequencies, liquid temperature, GIFs if you wanna throw a random GIF on there. I really did wanna do a hard loop system for those of you wondering. I've always wanted to do one, but with as frequently as I move my computer and change my setup, uh, and all that stuff, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense and the performance differences aren't enough to justify. Speaking of which, the reason I'm not gonna show you my desk right now is it is a fucking mess. I'm getting ready to move. Comment down below what you think of this build. How would you have done it different? Would you have done the same thing? Also, if you remembered, I have this extra motherboard now. I'm not sure how much this thing costs, but I know it'll make it a decent amount cheaper for someone looking to build a Threadripper to get it for free. If you wanna win this thing, first off, you have to be someone that wants to use it in your current build to upgrade or building a new PC. So share this video, and then on Instagram, hashtag JKBMOBO, M-O-B-O. Post a picture of your system, your current system, or maybe a, a cart on Amazon or something of what you're proposing to build, and I'm gonna pick one of you guys that's actually gonna use this uh, to win this motherboard, and hopefully make it a little bit cheaper for you to get into the Threadripper build territory. That's gonna be it for this video. Smash the subscribe button. If you haven't seen my last video, check that out. Uh, Cause YouTube's just like, hey, you got 140,000 subs. We're gonna show anyone that video. Thanks YouTube. Anyways, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one.